My name is Simon Clegg. I was the Chief Executive of the British Olympic Association from 1997 to 2009, and I'm now the Chief Executive of Ipswich Town Football Club. I started my life uh, in, in the Army. I got an opportunity as a young officer and then a more senior officer subsequently uh, to lead soldiers, including in um, operations uh, overseas. Uh, I was involved in managing one of the British uh, ski teams in the uh, mid-1980s before joining the British Olympic Association uh, in 1989 and subsequently I went on to uh, manage in one capacity or another uh, British athletes at the last 12 Olympic and Olympic Winter Games culminating in Beijing, our most successful performance for uh, 100 years. When I took over the British team here, just after the 1996 Olympic Games, we'd had our worst games uh, ever, only one gold medal uh, in the form of Steve Redgrave and Matthew Pinsent in the rowing in Atlanta in 1996. Uh, obviously, with the introduction of lottery, uh, and then the success of the bid, which has turbocharged the funding that is available to sport in no small part as a direct result of us setting fourth place in the medal table as the aspirational target in 2012. And of course the government had to come to the party and provide the funding to achieve that national target. Well, it was a substantial undertaking for a relatively small organisation. You know, David Luckus and I worked on this project for five years. David produced um, the feasibility study that ran to 395 pages, 167,000 words. And I was responsible for putting together the, the strategy to convince um, the government and indeed the Mayor of London uh, to support this aspiration that we had. And because uh, the political dimension was so important, because we didn't want the bid to become a political football, it was really important that we had complete cross-party support. And that's why I wrote to all 900 members of both the House of Commons and, and the House of Lords individually, why we were able to initiate uh, debates in both the House of Commons and the House of Lords, uh, and why I was able to convince both uh, Charles Kennedy uh, and Ian Duncan Smith, the then leaders of the Liberal Democratic Party and the Conservative Party, and subsequently uh, Tony Blair uh, and the rest of the Cabinet, to support our aspirations. Well, it was a very tense moment, you know, eight years of our lives had gone into that particular moment. Um, I was sat next to uh, David Beckham, the footballer, um, and it was very tense, I have to say. Uh, all of the uh, photographers, all the TV crews were in front of the uh, French uh, and the Paris delegation, very, you know, very few in front of ourselves, but I was absolutely convinced that we had stood a very realistic chance of, of success. I knew it was going to be determined the moment. Jacques Rogge uh, opened the, the envelope, the president of the IOC. Obviously he stumbled for a bit, he announced that the games were going to be awarded to London and it was complete euphoria. I mean, it's just unbelievable um, excitement. Uh, it took a couple of moments to, to sink in. Uh, everyone jumped up, uh, big bear hugs between myself and David Beckham and of course the rest of the, the London delegation. And then subsequently at the press conference, you know, very flattered to be invited to come up and be one of the three British signatories on the host city contract. Legacy from a British Olympic Association for staging the Olympic Games is very much about moving sport up both the political and social agendas. Uh, no one can argue that we've not achieved the former now. You know, sport has never had such a high place at the political high table. The real challenge now, over the next two years, before we stage the Games in London 2012, is to make sure that sport is moved up the social agenda. Because if the closest the kids in Glasgow and Cardiff and Edinburgh get to the Olympic Games in 2012 is watching it on a television screen, then I think we've failed a whole generation. Well, I've never been uh, photographed by a professional photographer before, so I have to say it was quite an education for me. Um, the fact that he, he warned me that he'd need two hours of David Luckett's and my time, you know, it was a little bit of a surprise. You know, I thought I'd turn up, you know, we, we'd crack in in about 10, 15 minutes, uh, have a cup of coffee, and then we'd be off again. Uh, that wasn't quite the case. And um, I have to say it did open my eyes to, um, you know, the, the, the level of expertise that there is within you know, professional photography um, and what a perfectionist uh, Brian was in that regard. You know, we spent a lot of time actually out on the turf at Wembley trying that before he find, found the final location. Once he had found the final location he was comfortable on, you know, we then spent a lot of time adapting the poses to get the, uh, the final shot. 
David Luckett and I uh, know each other very well. We've worked together, you know, for the last uh, 10 years, 12 years together. So we've got a very close relationship anyway. So there was no problem between the interaction um, between the two of us. Um, uh, there were a couple of comments about, you know, how close that Brian wanted us to get uh, to each other and the particular pose that he wanted us to adopt, which was not, I have to say, the most natural poses for, for either of us. So there was quite a lot of banter and, and perhaps that lightened uh, the, the whole atmosphere, but it was good fun and, and I'm absolutely delighted with the outcome. I think it's really difficult, uh, even though I have been to 12 Olympic and Olympic Winter Games, for me to properly articulate how large uh, this event is. It is going to transform people's lives. Um, this will be a milestone in their lives. I still meet people who are in their 70s and 80s who can remember as young children being taken to Wembley in 1948. And for them, you know, it is a great milestone in their lives. You know, for most people in this country, they will only ever see the Games here once in London in 2012. Now, this, this city will become party city. This will be a huge celebration, not only in London, but across the whole of the country as well. Uh, and it's absolutely right and proper that we rejoice that the world is coming to London in 2012.